Hey everybody, my name is Brian. I am the software developer behind Magic 8-Ball. Um, I have a list of frequently asked questions and in the Discord group there is an actual section called frequently asked questions, but no one seems to read it. So I thought I'd just make a video covering uh, most of the questions. I can't do all of them or this will be like a five hour video. So these are the most asked questions about Magic 8-Ball. So first off, what is Magic 8-Ball? That's a loaded question. It is a stock market prediction engine, and I hate calling it a prediction engine because it's more of a forecasting application. It kind of tries to forecast the stock market based off the current metrics, and we'll talk about in depth how it does what it does. Um, that being said, it has a forecasting engine or a prediction engine, and then I have slapped a trading engine onto the side of it because a you know the early versions people came in and said, well, I don't know how to trade this. You know, what do I do? So it kicks out trades every five minutes and those trades have been wildly successful. Um, so if I had to put it all into like a sales pitch, it is a stock market prediction engine with a trade system slapped on the side of it. Maybe I need to hire somebody in sales and marketing because that's just way too big. What is the history behind Magic 8-Ball is the next question. Um, during COVID, I tried to learn something new. So I stumbled across options trading and well, there's only so many episodes of Tiger King you can watch. Yeah. So options trading, I found, was a really fun way to lose money very quickly, and I didn't like that. So I started watching a bunch of YouTube videos, and if you've gone out to YouTube and looked up options trading, you know there's just a billion videos out there, and most of them are what I call disinformation and sales pitches, because you will sit through a half-hour video, learn nothing, and then they try to sell you a service. So I try to avoid making those kind of videos. Anyways, point being, I started automating uh, my own specific brand of trading, even though I was very new, and kind of poking holes at the market. I am a software developer. I also specialize in deconstructing software. Um, so like if you have like a virus on your computer, I would be the guy that would deconstruct that virus and figure out what it's doing. Um, at least I used to in a previous life. I've gone on to management, but it, that's a different video altogether. Point being, I love reverse engineering things. I love puzzles. So I started looking at the stock market, specifically SPX, as a piece of software and a puzzle to be deconstructed. So I took the options chain, started slicing it apart and looking at the different metrics. Well, yeah, it didn't work. And it didn't work a lot. And I ended up deleting it and rewriting it from scratch 94 times. Yes, 94 times. So the current version, even though it's like 1.0.31, is actually what I call Magic 94 because it's the 94th iteration of me completely rewriting this from scratch. So it's got a long history to it. The next question is, does it really predict the stock market? It depends on how you define the word predict. So I've had people come into the group going, well, does it take into account the news? Is it taking into account what's going on with Russia and Ukraine and COVID and this and that? No. It doesn't have a clue about the world or what's going on outside of that options chain. What this does is it deconstructs the options chain and a bit of the historical price movement to try to figure out and build a forecasting model where it's gonna go. So does it predict? Well, depends on what you call predicting. That's why I prefer to call it a forecasting model. But yes, if you look at the trades, you can see it's definitely predicting because you can put a trade on it, say, 10 in the morning and it will expire in full profit. And the trades are historically more and more accurate. We'll go over the accuracy of the trades later in this video. The next question is, how does it work? Well, magic. I, I don't know, I've always wanted to do that. Everybody asks me how this works. I've had people literally email me and call me on my personal cell and say, I demand your source code, I need to see it immediately. And I'm like, no, get out of here. So. At a high level, what does it do? It takes the options chain in its totality and it looks at each individual metric of the options chain and it tries to determine based off each metric what each metric is going to do. So for example, uh, some of the bigger ones are like volume, delta, gamma, and open interest. So let's just take volume for example. A lot of people believe in volume profile analysis. So what the system would do is it would take volume and build a profile of volume in its memory and then build a linear regressed guess or prediction, if you will, of where it's gonna go based off volume. And then it does the same thing for like open interest, delta, gamma, and so on and so on. And there's many other metrics, but it all kind of combines them into one prediction. Now, 
that in itself is not really true. Um, it actually kicks out two predictions. When you look at the chart, and I'll try to remember to put a picture of the chart on the screen, there is a dark green line, which will follow the pink line. The pink line is price, but the dark green line is the long-term or end-of-day prediction. You'll see it kind of like tracks it or almost mirrors it. And if you watch this long enough, you'll notice that the price will move more violently than the prediction will. And then there is the flat, bright green line. That is the short-term prediction, which is basically within an hour what we think is going to happen. So it does kick out multiple predictions for multiple scenarios, short-term and long-term. How accurate is it? That's the next question is how accurate is it? Well, that's a tough question, but we actually have logs this time. <laughs> Remember, this is still early software. I mean, this is version 1.031, so it's still a 1.0 software. Um, these are the metrics as of today from the Discord group. And this is SPX. It was 93.51% accurate. That's 93% accurate. And that is 308 total trades with 288 wins, 20 losses. And those are spread across butterflies, iron condors, verticals, and something I call sonar. I'll talk about it later in the video, but sonar is just a fancy iron condor. And so butterflies were 80% accurate. Iron condors, 100% accurate. 100% accurate. What that means, it didn't matter what time you took the trade, any single iron condor you took from the system would have gone full profit. You would have made money. Uh, verticals, 93% accurate on verticals. Today kicked ass, by the way. And sonar is 100% accurate. So what does that mean roughly? Well, it means that the system generates trades every five minutes. And we have identified key entry points in the market, which we'll talk about later. But of those key entry points, you can enter a trade and have a reasonable expectation of making money. So for example, with verticals being about 80% profitable, we know that if you enter at a specific time, you have an 80% likelihood of that thing expiring in full profit. 80% likelihood. That, of course, is dependent on news and world events. Why are butterflies so difficult to pin? Okay, so butterflies, gosh, I hate butterflies. I'm, I'm gonna say I just, I really hate butterflies, but that's the next question. Why are butterflies so difficult to pin? They are the least accurate in the system. So overall, butterflies typically have about a 25% accuracy rating. When we talk about accuracy in the system, we're talking about from the moment you take that trade to the end of the day, will it expire with money? And butterflies are only about 25% overall in the system. Now, overall is a period of months and months. So the reason why butterflies are so hard to pen is because you're taking a very narrow slice of that market and saying it's going to go exactly right here. That's like picking a rock off the ground, looking up in the sky, throwing it and hitting an airplane right on the nose. It's, it's hard. It's really hard. Mathematically, it has the lowest probability of success. But in the system, they're getting better. And I'm working on a new model. I think I call it Butterfly Bazooka. Yeah, let that image bake in your head. Butterfly Bazooka which has an even higher success rate. I think right now it's testing at about a 45% success rate, but it's still early, early development. It's still in a spreadsheet, believe it or not. The next question, iron condors, are they guaranteed 100%? No, nothing is guaranteed in the system. This is the stock market and this is the real world. Iron condors in the system are what are called ultra wide iron condors. So they are, let's see if I can get my hands on the edge of the screen here. They are massive. Look at the screen, that's the entire market. That's like they're right at the edges of that market. So what happens is as the day moves on, you'll see the iron condors will start here and they start shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. Remember an iron condor is being generated every five minutes. So the first one will be here and then so on and so on. And each iron condor gets progressively smaller as it narrows in on the target. The reason why they're so successful is because they are so stinking wide and they have very low premiums. So the risk to reward in this is absolutely horrible. You're talking about uh, getting $50 and risking almost 900. It's to, in my mind, they're really not worth it. Um, I've had iron condors go against me and one iron condor going against you can wipe out, you know, an entire month worth of wins. So it's not fun. Um, iron condors, you really have to have great stop loss is really what's critical with them because if they go against you, they're going to go bad very quickly. Next question is verticals. Um, 
this is one of the love-hate relationships with the system. People will look at these and they'll say, well, why does the system say, you know, sell a call, but yet the price is going up? Now, remember, you sell the opposite. So if you're selling a call, you want the price to go down. But if you look at the chart in, say, E-Trade or Thinkorswim or whatever you're using, the price is trending up. And then you'll see that throughout the day, it'll flip. Like Magic 8-Ball will say, sell a call, sell a put, and it'll kind of flip back and forth. That's because the market doesn't stay flat and the market tends to move. So the way the system calculates a vertical is it looks at the beginning of the day and it looks at where we are and it tries to figure out based off the, tra the trajectory of the market and all those underlying prediction metrics we talked about, is it going to be above or below a certain spot? Now we look at where we are, where that price is right now because that's that snapshot we have to take. And remember, a trade is generated every five minutes. So if we're here and the market's been going up, it's gonna say, sell a put. But if we're here and the market's been going down all day, it's going to say, you guessed it, sell a call. Now, the system's not perfect and it does flip back and forth. And you'll see this, especially on neutral days where the market kind of does this kind of horizontal movement, it'll say, call put, call put, call put, and it drives me absolutely bonkers. That's why I don't advise watching the trades. What I do is I will take the trade at a specific time, and we'll talk about entry times, but you'll take that trade at a specific time, and then you watch the charts, especially like the magic chart and the sonar chart to determine how healthy your trade's going to be. Next question is sonar. What's the difference between sonar and condors? Um, two key differences between the two. So. The normal condors in the system are generated based off delta. So they're generated, I think, at like a 0.05 delta. And that's why throughout the day they kind of get smaller. They're also very wide, where sonars are actually calculated on a different algorithm altogether. So I wrote a new prediction model called sonar and put it in Magic 8-Ball. And sonar looks at a bunch of key metrics and then mathematically calculates them in a very different way from the magic prediction. Are you confused? Yes. So again, this is early version software. So there is a magic prediction, there's a long-term prediction, a short-term prediction, and now a sonar prediction. There's like four predictions in this engine. So what sonar tries to do is kind of combine all those into one package and say, this is where the price is going to go. And I'll put a sonar chart on the screen so you can see a visual representation of what I mean. When sonar knows where that price is going to go, there's zero question where it's going to go. Now, that being said, the sonar trade is simply an iron condor, but it's based off that sonar prediction. So it's taking a special calculation, finding the center of that calculation, and building a condor around it. A much narrower condor with better premium. Okay, next question. I love this question. I get this all the time. Why does the prediction keep changing? Well, um, Open up any broker and look at the chart. Why is the chart changing? Because the world is changing around it. People are buying, they're selling, world events happen, uh, news happens constantly. So that's why the prediction changes. Every five minutes, the system goes out, grabs the market information, and forms a new forecast model based off the current information and the historical data we've collected so far throughout the day. Remember, this is all zero DTE. So it's going to say, okay, let's say it's like 12 o'clock in the afternoon, it's going to grab that 12 o'clock snapshot, run its calculations, compare it to the previous snapshots throughout the day that have been taken every five minutes, and then build a new forecasting model. And from that, it generates all brand new trades, which is why, ta-da, everything seems like it's changing. You want to understand that no software is perfect. And if we were to simply look at the market at 9.35 on the dot, it's going to be horribly inaccurate. We want to actually adapt and change as the market adapts and changes. I do this for a few critical reasons. First, I don't know when you want to enter a trade, so it generates a new trade every five minutes. Second, the market can and does change, especially when you have news or world events. I personally will not trade when the government is coming out and you have a, I think they're called a FOMO speaker, when they get out there and they start talking about things and rate inflation hikes and all that nonsense, I just, I won't trade because the market's too volatile. But I still see the system working beautifully even on those days, so maybe I should. Okay, next question is free version versus the paid version. Okay, the I get a lot of questions on this. So the free version is, well, free. You don't even need to feed it a credit card. There's gonna be a link down below to the paid and the free versions. But the free version is simply a very small text wall. 
of that current snapshot of where it thinks it's gonna go within a range. And then you get two charts. You get what's called the magic chart and the quad chart. It's vastly unhelpful for anybody who's serious about trading. I only throw it out there just so people can kind of get a feel for what they're gonna see before they actually put a credit card down. The paid version, however, has a large Discord server with a lot of very active users. I think at the time of this recording, let me look it up, we have 312 active users at this point in time, and it's growing. I, I'm literally watching people subscribe at the moment. Um, the paid server is only 25 bucks a month or $250 a year. Um, if you're good at math, you know that $250 a year is a slight discount, but it's nothing special. Um, that being said, the main draw to the paid account is A, you get a large community, B, there's an education section where I've invited other people who know how to trade. These are professionals in the stock market. Like for example, my buddies, Axe Option. Love you guys. They're in there. Ernie with zero DTE. Vance of course is in there. Love you Vance. And there's a bunch of other people in there as well that are building their own systems and they have their own mentoring channels and they in some cases have their own businesses. They have YouTube channels. They have you know, um, education that you can sign up for. They have their own discords even. So, what I'm trying to get at is you have a giant ecosystem and then you have all of Magic 8-Ball as well. So you have the five minute updates, you have the three main charts, which is the magic chart, the quad chart, and the sonar chart, along with the full prediction forecast and, you guessed it, all of the trades that are generated. Next question is, how much does it cost and why are you charging for it? That's a great question. So it costs 25 bucks a month or $250 a year because I have an entire server infrastructure in the cloud I have to pay for and a data feed, which is not cheap. Uh, data, ironically, is not free. And if it is free, it's usually crap. Uh, that being said, I have to pay for things. It sucks, it's just the way the world works. So I defined a price tag of $25 for one simple reason. I want somebody day one to come in and take their very first trade. Let's just hypothetically say it's an iron condor. They place a trade, they win. Let's say they win 50 bucks. They have just paid for an entire month of Magic 8-Ball and they have a small profit to show for it. I really don't want to make a fortune selling subscriptions. I want to make a fortune doing options trading. The problem is I am a software developer. I am not a professional options trader and I'm trying to learn options trading so I can build the software to do it for me. So a great example is Axe Options. I love Axe Options. I'm a member of Axe Options and they have some of the best strategies when it comes to verticals that I've ever seen. And so I've learned from Axe Options, the professionals, and I've automated that to the best of my ability so far, and it's getting about an 80% success rate. And what that means to me is that I feel confident grabbing a vertical, plugging it into my trading platform and knowing with an 80% chance of certainty, I'm going to make full profit on that trade. That's the type of power I'm looking for in the future. So the reason why I'm charging money is simply so I can run the equipment. All right, how do I join? I, that's always, that always boggles me. How do you join? There's literally a link down below. Click the link, feed it a credit card for 25 bucks a month. If you don't wanna do that, you can go to the free server and just watch. Um, I'll admit the free server is kind of boring because nobody's really chatty in there and there's not a whole lot to see other than just the predictions come out every 15 minutes, or sorry, every 30 minutes. Um, how do I cancel? Again, that one mystifies me because when you join, you are sent a link to your own customer portal and you can go in there and cancel at any time. You can also open a chat with the Discord bot. Um, I think it's called the Launch Pass bot. It's over in the chat windows. And you just type the word cancel and it'll walk you through. Um, super easy to cancel. When in doubt, you can message me and I'll cancel your account for you. How do I use it? Well, that's a very good question. It depends on what you want to do as a trader. Everybody has different strategies, but I can give you my strategies. What I do is I check around 10 or 10.30 Eastern Standard Time because that's the time frame we have identified as the best time to enter. And I will take a vertical or an iron condor. I personally don't like butterflies. Sorry, I just don't. Um, usually I'll take a vertical and I will set my appropriate stop loss with that. And then I will just let it go throughout the day and I'll check on it as I can. Again, I have family, day job, all that stuff. So all this on my end is fully automated and it just runs. And then it'll either stop out and I just respect my stop loss or I check back towards the end of day and it's collected full profit. Now, if I'm super busy and I'm not feeling confident in the market, I will cash out. So 
A great example is kind of how Axe Options does it. Remember, I'm a member of Axe and I kind of learned verticals through them. They will set their stop, I think at a 2X stop. Don't quote me on that, I'm not an expert. And then they will collect profit at about 50%. So as an example, they'll get a premium of like a dollar and they'll set their stop for like $2, but they'll collect profit at 50 cents. So they're either losing $2 or taking 50 cent profit. And if you watch Axis videos, which I highly encourage, the numbers are probably different. All right, now the other thing that I'll do is around one o'clock Eastern Standard Time, I'll look at what's called a sonar, which is just a specialized iron condor. And those have historically been pretty good. Like today, sonars were 100% accurate, meaning every single sonar trade was perfectly fine. Uh, next question I get, this one, this one really cracks me up. Can you place the trades for me? No, that's actually legal. I can't do that, I'm sorry. Um, next one is, can you mentor me or give me advice? Actually, that is also illegal. I cannot give you financial advice. And I would not mentor anybody because again, I'm a software developer. I'm not an options trader. I'm trying to become one, but I'm better at software. Another question is, why does this create trades every five minutes and do I have to take them? Okay, yeah. So the system does a lot of math and it's too intensive to do once a minute. So fi every five minutes is about the best I can do until I upgrade the server infrastructure in the background. And no, you absolutely should not take a trade every five minutes, you'll just destroy your account. What you should do is develop a investing plan. And for me, my investing plan is at 10.30, I look for a trade that I like. And typically that's a vertical. And then I'll place that trade and run that trade as long as I can and collect profit when I'm comfortable or let it expire. That is what I would recommend. Another question I get constantly is which trade should I take? Sorry, I cannot give you financial advice. It'd be illegal for me to do that. I would just say pick what you are most confident in and go with that. Um, I would recommend you look at the statistics and statistically from most successful to least successful, iron condors, sonars, verticals, then butterflies. So iron condors and sonars are gonna be kind of your workhorses because they are so stinking accurate, but it also has higher risk, lower reward. Verticals are kind of that sweet spot, and butterflies, you have, well, high reward, but very low chances of getting that high reward. Uh, what stop loss should I use? That's another question I get constantly. Honestly, I, I couldn't even begin to tell you. I'm not an expert. Uh, we do have an education section with mentors in there. You can ask them. But uh, what I personally do is I shoot for about a two times stop. So if I say I take a premium of a dollar, I'll shoot for a stop of 2.0. Uh, next question is, are these trades guaranteed? <laughs> I don't know who asks these questions, come on. No, there's nothing guaranteed. And this is where I'm gonna go on a rant about risk management. You should follow your risk management strategies. And the risk management strategy that I personally learned is never risk more than 5% of your account and never risk more money than you can afford to lose. And when you place a trade, make sure that you set the appropriate stop loss and you have a good profit collection plan in place. So don't get greedy, you know, you see profit, take profit. Uh, how do I read the charts? That's the next question is how do I read the charts? That's actually a really good question. So I'll put the charts on the screen here. The first one is the magic chart. This shows you the price in pink along with the long-term or end of day prediction in dark green. And you'll see that dark green line will kind of move along with the price and it readjusts every time it takes a snapshot once every five minutes. That dark green line is what we're expecting end of day. The bright green flat horizontal line, that is short term. That's where we expect that price to go within an hour. And you'll likely see something like the price is below both green lines. That means the price is gonna go up. Or the price is above both green lines, the price is gonna go down. Now, if the price is between both of those green lines, you'll see the price usually gravitate towards the soon or the bright green line and then up towards the dark green line. That's just how that chart works. Uh, the next chart is called the quad chart. That's where I take the four major pillars of this. You have volume, open interest, uh, delta, and gamma. And it kind of builds a profile of each one and then shows you a bright pink line on each one of where each one of those analyzers thinks the price is gonna go. So now you have four different independent metrics and each one has a range with an up and a down directional and it just tries to tell you with a bit of confidence what each part of the analyzer is thinking within the system. It's pretty, pretty, I wanna say it's a pretty simple chart but it's also very complex to look at. 
And the final chart is the sonar chart. I love the sonar chart because it tells you exactly what's going on in the market. That's why I called it sonar. It's like you're in a submarine and it just pings and shows you everything in front of you. So the sonar chart I love the most, especially towards the end of the day where it shows just a gigantic spike towards a specific number. And you can know with a huge degree of confidence where that's gonna go. It'll also show you in the profile whether it's going to trend up or down based off where that swelling in the profile is. Next question I get quite a bit is, where do I see historical logs and how do I backtest this? That's a loaded question. Um, it's very hard to backtest this because as I've made improvements in the software, the backtesting would change. So for example, the version that is now did not exist two months ago. It's, I'm constantly making improvements in the system. However, I do have a log section and it publishes the logs daily. And once in a while I go out there and just say, you know, here's all the logs to date, have fun. And then it's up to you to independently go back test these if you want to. I do know there's a couple groups of people that are just religiously back testing these. And so far the feedback's been pretty good. Uh, another question is what is test versus production? Uh, that's a good, that's actually a really good question. So when you're in Magic 8-Ball, you'll see two areas. One is production or prediction. And that is the actual production or current version. But then you'll see another one that says test, use at own risk. That is the newest version that I'm working on. And it says use at own risk because it's in testing. I'm sitting here developing it and it's in testing and I'm just letting it run. I have both of those because I don't like developing in a bubble. I want everyone to see what's coming in the next version. And I get a lot of feedback from that where people say, hey, I love this new feature or, you know, oh my gosh, why did you remove a feature? I needed that. Next question is, what is the difference between sonar and magic? That is a great question. So they're different algorithms. They calculate very differently. So magic will take the entire options chain, strip it apart, run a bunch of math on each metric and try to form a grand calculation, if you will. And it's very, uh, very, uh, I hate saying complex, but it's very complex. And it gives me a royal headache to debug when it goes off the rails, but that's magic. Now, sonar is very different. Sonar just says what is simply happening right now. And it's a modified version of Gex. And I actually have published Sonar out in the Discord group. You can even put the script in Thinkorswim and watch it right on your options chain. That's literally the same script that's on the live stream. By the way, that's another question. There's no sound on the live stream. It literally says it right on the screen. No sound on the live stream. Sorry, <laughs> pet peeve of mine. I get asked why there's no sound on the live stream about five times a day. That being said, which is more accurate, sonar versus magic? Well, they serve two different purposes. Sonar is what is happening right now. Magic is what is going to happen. So I'm trying to combine the two into a third prediction model, which is coming in the next major version. Uh, the difference being, I don't like the now prediction inside of magic. I prefer sonar because sonar is more accurate but I do believe that magic is more accurate for an end of day prediction. All right, what is the current state of development? That's a question I don't get asked super often, but I get asked often enough. So the current state of development, I'm trying to get this software on a stable broker. And what I mean by stable broker is, originally it was on Thinkorswim, but Thinkorswim is moving with Charles Schwab. And there's about 2000 some odd developers out there going, TDA, come on, what's going on? Because you can't actually create a new API account. And if you have an API account, they're not really giving you a whole lot of information about what's going on in the future of their API. I don't wanna build something and then just have it one day magically stop working because TDA just decided not to do anything. Yeah, that sucks. So I went out and I looked at, I mean, literally dozens and dozens of brokers and data brokers and APIs. For example, I looked at interactive brokers. I, I hate them. That they, it's, I don't even wanna call it an API. That's just horrible. Um, Interactive brokers, if you're watching, people want to make a web request, a single request, and get the options chain back. They don't want some gateway, they don't want to jump through all these hoops, they don't want to deal with Java. Simple, it's 2023, make it happen, guys. Um, TD Ameritrade, I love you guys, but you gotta be more transparent what's going on with your API. E-Trade, same thing. E-Trade's documentation is absolutely horrible. Their data is amazing, but their, their, their documentation sucks. And they're emerging with someone else too, which makes their API in complete question. And then of course there's Tasty. Someone's gonna go, what about Tastyworks? I did check that out. They have a new API and 
I think it's called NQ feed or something like that. Again, tasty. Same thing I'm going to say about interactive brokers it is 2023. I want to make a simple web request and get the data back. I don't want to mess around with multiple tokens or jump to some live stream or no, I want to make a web request. Tradier. I wish I had better things to say about Tradier. Tradier was one of the best APIs I've ever seen, and it's extremely well documented. The problem Tradier has is that their options chain is in real time, but the spot price for the underlying, especially in an index, is 15 minutes delayed. And I've actually talked to Tradier on the phone and said, guys, if you fix this, you're gonna have a flood of developers coming to you. And they just came back and said, sorry, it's too expensive, we don't wanna do it. Ugh, I mean, what, what can you do? They have the best API, they have some of the best data, but they wanna give you a 15 minute delayed spot price. It's just not, not something I can work with. So that's the situation is, I've jumped from broker to broker to broker to broker, literally dozens of them trying to find one. And I finally found one that I think is stable. Um, it's currently in testing and I do plan on moving that to full production. The problem of course is that it's a little pricey. Um, some of these data feeds can get super, super pricey. We're talking from, you know, 50 bucks a month, but the data's crap, up to 500 a month and the data's okay to, I think CBOE quoted me almost $30,000 a month just to run Magic 8-Ball. Yeah, 30 grand a month. Come on, guys. Data's not that expensive. So, sorry to go on a rant, but this has been um, the bulk of my year is just jumping from one broker to the next instead of actually developing Magic 8-Ball. I'm just trying to find a, a safe and stable data broker with reliable data that doesn't cost me a fortune every month. Um, if you know of one, put it in the comments down below. Chances are I've probably looked at it. Um, there have been a couple that I've wanted to try, but they're too cost prohibitive. So the final question is what's next for Magic 8-Ball? That's a really good question. What is next? I wanna get the system stabilized on a data broker, and then I wanna focus on what I call version two software. So version two is going to be a radical redesign of the system using all of the lessons learned that I've gained from building the current system. There's a reason why I wanna start from scratch. A, I wanna get rid of a lot of the clutter and crap and shrink the CPU usage and the memory footprint of this thing. And I want to split it up into multiple modules, or if you will, or multiple processes. So instead of having one giant ecosystem, I want to segment it off and each one have independent functions, or as what I like to call, design it the way it should be, the way I should have done it to begin with. Um, Again, this is version one software, so it was pretty much just write it, does it work? Hey, throw it out in production, where version two is going to be a redesign of everything. Uh, some key features of version two will be uh, more frequent updates. I wanna get it down to the minute. Um, I also wanna build almost like a real-time chart off a website, don't know if I'll ever get it there. And I want the trades to actually track a stop loss. So I want it to say, you know, here's the recommended trade, Here's the recommend, I shouldn't say recommended, but here's the example trade, here's the example stop loss, and then track it in the system so that if the price movement goes and hits the stop, the trade in the system stops out and it'll actually notify people, hey, this trade stopped. You know, Really what I'm looking for is really, really accurate logs because once I have those extremely accurate logs, I can start pinpointing better entry times and better entry situations. So for example, um, the current system is not smart enough to do this, but this is what I want to do in version two. Let's say the market's doing this kind of serpentine thing, but it's trending up, right? Instead of entering verticals going up when it's up here and then potentially stopping and then enter, stop, enter, stop, it would wait and say, oh, wait for it, wait for it, enter, and then profit, and then enter and profit. And the current system's just not smart enough to do that. So maybe it'll get there maybe it won't this is a lot of development and like i said i have a day job and family and all that so it consumes a lot of my time but uh anyways if you have any questions or comments drop them below i'll try to check the video comments i'm not on youtube a whole lot definitely throw them out in one of the discord servers and i hope to see you there